Ranger. Fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver. The Lone Ranger. Hayo Silver! Away! With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. The Lone Ranger had learned that railroad tracks were to be laid through the town of Little Falls. Knowing there were countless schemes by which dishonest men profited by the railroad's expansion, he had ridden to the vicinity and sent Tonto into town to investigate. Listen to me, Bruce. Not interested, Gibson. I'm authorized to walk. I you. don't get into town often, Gibson. When I do, I prefer to sit alone. Listen, Brewster. The railroad must have your property. There are two mountains, one on each side of my land. Why don't you tunnel through one of them? The railroad can't afford to go. Don't on. tell me you can't afford it, taking people's land for a pittance. We don't take land from anyone. We pay a reasonable price for it. How can you pay me for the work I put into it? My ranch was dry caked earth and scrub oak when I bought it. I cleared it, built my house on it, plowed it, irrigated it, planted it. We understand. That's why we're offering... And no railroad agent's going to take it away from me. We're offering $5,000 for this... That doesn't interest me, Gibson. I said get. I never tried to do business with a more unreasonable man. Then stop trying. We'll talk again when you've cooled off a bit. Cooled off, eh? No eastern tenderfoot talks to me like that for two cents. I... Well, we might talk this over at your ranch tomorrow. Stay away from my ranch, Gibson. If it dares step foot on it, I'll put windows through your skull. <laughs> Wasn't that funny, Paulson? Brewster must have had a couple of drinks too many. <laughs> no, Brewster didn't have anything to drink at all. You know, I've got a suspicion about something, Grant. And if I'm correct, you and I are going to pick up $5,000 on a valuable piece of property. Excuse me. I'm Paulson, Ray Paulson. I'm the lawyer here in Little Falls. I'm Harry Gibson. Glad to know you. Pleasure. Sit down. I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. Jack Brewster is quite a quarrelsome man. I tried to tell him the railroad only wanted enough of his property for a right away, but he wouldn't let me get a word in edgewise. You're willing to pay five thousand dollars for it, is that right? Mm-hmm. Do you carry that much cash with you? Oh no. If he signs the agreement, the railroad sends the money to him. Oh, I see. Well, uh, were you going out to the ranch tomorrow? Well, I don't know what to do. The railroad should have that property, but I don't relish being shot at. <laughs> you know, I'd like to see the railroad here just as much as you would, Mr. Gibson. I wish I could deal with you instead of Brewster. You know, I was thinking, I know Brewster about as well as anybody in town. Suppose I had a talk with him first. Well, uh, Paulson, I... Oh, do you think I'm going to charge a fee? No, and I'm glad to do it. When do you see him? Well, I was going to fairgrounds tomorrow. Everybody in town will be there for the cattle judging. But this is much more important. I'll see him first thing in the morning. Shall I go with you? Oh, no, no, no. That'd mean gunplay. No, I'll get in touch with you just as soon as I've talked to him. Oh, uh, Gibson, I wouldn't want anybody to know I'm not getting a fee for this, so uh, suppose we just keep it to ourselves. I don't know how to thank you enough, Paulson. Pleasure.
Say, Mr. Sammy. Say, Tonto. What did you learn in town? Railroad agent named Gibson and an old man named Brewster have big quarrel in cafe. What about? Uh, Jack Brewster not want to sell his ranch to railroad. I've never met Brewster, but I've heard about him in past visits to Little Falls. He's an old cowboy, one of the first settlers, quick-tempered and fast on the draw. Did he say why he wouldn't sell? Him say agent not know how much work him put in a ranch. I'd like to talk to Brewster. Can we go to his ranch now? Yes, Tonto. You can tell me what else was said on the way over. Leaving Tonto with the horses, the Lone Ranger entered Brewster's home. Mass man, what are you doing here? I'm not going to harm you, Brewster. Darn right you're not. Where's my gun? I'll return it after we talk. What are you after? I have nothing worth stealing. I'm no thief. You've lived in the West all your life, Jack. Maybe you've heard of me. I'm often called the Lone Ranger. You, you're the Lone Ranger? That's right. And I want to help you. I understand an agent from the railroad has contacted you about your property. Thirty years of my life went into this ranch. Now the railroad wants to take it away from me. Why do you live in the West, Jack? Why do I live in the West? Well, it's my kind of country, I guess. I've lived here all my life. I guess I love it. Then why sell it short? Who's selling it short? You are. Railroads mean the West will prosper. Ranchers and farmers like yourself will have a new quick way to get their produce to market. I rode across your ranch. A large part of it was uncultivated. Why is that? Well, I can't get hands to help me with it. With a railroad, ranch hands may migrate here. <laughs> Tender feet, green horn. They'd learn. You're advising me to sell my ranch to Gibson? Is that it? I'm suggesting that you listen to what he has to say. He wants my ranch for $5,000. If I sell, where do I go? Gibson is known for fair dealing. You'll be able to keep most of your ranch. Huh? The railroad only wants a small strip for tracks. He never mentioned that to me. I understand you didn't give me much of a chance. Then well, I'll think it over. Maybe I'll talk to Gibson tomorrow. I hoped you'd say that. Adios. I've got some information for you. Well, come inside. Oh, Jack. Yes, Paulson. I've always wanted to read this book. Do you mind if I borrow it? Go ahead. I don't get time for reading anyway. But don't you want to know what it is? I saw it. You saw it? You mean to tell me you read this title all the way across the room? My eyes haven't gone back on me yet. What's the news you were talking about? Pretty disturbing, Jack. That railroad agent was in to see me this morning. What about? He asked me to draw up eviction papers. On you. Me? Is that legal? Can I be evicted? Well, he said some pretty hard things about you. Such as what? He said you were a stupid, arrogant old man and you ought to be taught a lesson. I felt like taking a bull whip to him. <laughs> I also talked to him about that $5,000 he offered you. What did Gibson have to say about that? He doesn't intend to give you the $5,000. He only made you that offer to get you interested. What does he intend to offer me? Not one red cent. Why the dirty conniving no good skunk? He intends to serve those eviction papers and have you thrown off your land, Jack. That masked man last night. Masked man? Came here? Yes. 
Gave me a big song and dance about the railroads helping the West. He must have been sent here by Gibson. Sure he was. I should have guessed it last night. He better not come sneaking in here again. Well, what are you going to do? No one carrying an eviction notice gets on my land. I knew you'd feel like that, and I'm with you 100%. I'll go into town. If anything new happens, I'll be back. Huh. Oh, Jack. Yeah? Thanks for the book. All my suspicions of our Brewster were correct. He's as blind as a bat and too proud to admit it. But I still don't see how that's going to earn us $5,000 in his land. Well, I haven't got time to explain that now. Besides, there's a masked man sticking his nose into this, and we got to act fast. I wrote this this morning. Deliver it to Gibson. What's in it, Rafe? It tells him to go with you to Brewster's ranch. Do I take Gibson straight out there? No, no. You know that trail through the woods about a half mile east of here? Yeah. Take him by that way. I'll meet you there. Okay. Close now, getting worried. Worried? Why should you be worried? Get off your horse. What is this? What are you doing, Paul? I said to get off your horse. You're being very foolish, Paulson. I haven't much money, but if you rob me, I'll report it to the railroad. They'll have you in jail in no time. Get the note from me, Marx. Got it, Rafe. You're not going to report anything to anybody. Listen, Paulson. If it's if it's money you want, I'll get. No, Paulson. No. 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 He's dead, Rafe. Did you mean to kill him? Of course. But how are we going to get the five thousand dollars? The railroad wants to strip of Brewster's land. The railroad also has more than one agent. When the next one arrives here, I'll own that property, and it'll cost him $10,000. Put him on his horse across the saddle. On his horse? Aren't we going to leave him here? No. We're going to take him to Brewster's ranch. Hold it. This is the spot. You sure Brewster didn't hear us, Reef? Yeah, positive. He'd have been out of the house by now. Are you certain about Brewster? You know his reputation as a crack shot. Why do you think I shot Gibson? Brewster can't hit the broadside of a barn. Seems to me I take all the chances where you You just... want your money, don't you? Sure, all sure. All right, do exactly as I told you. I'll see you in town later. Jack! Jack! Inside, quick! Gibson's right behind me with the eviction notice. He can't serve no eviction notice. Is the sheriff with him? No, he's alone. He said he didn't need the sheriff to handle you. Well, here he comes and he's got a gun. You better protect yourself. He Jack. better protect himself. Brewster, come out of that house. Get off my property, Gibson. You get off it, Brewster. I got a legal eviction notice. You hit him, Jack. Huh? Quick, inside. Well, I didn't think you'd kill him. Are you sure I did? Of course, he dropped like a sack of potatoes, didn't you see? I, sure, sure I saw. If there's any doubt in your mind, Jack, let's go out and take a look at the body. No, I, I don't want to see it. What am I going to do? It's pretty serious. The sheriff might even call it murder. Well, it was self-defense. He shot at me first. That'll be pretty tough to prove. You're not even wounded. Now, what you need is a good lawyer, Jack. You promised to stick by me, Rafe. You want me to handle it? I'd appreciate it if you would. All right, fine. I'll drop the necessary documents when I get into town. But first, I want to give you a warning. Yeah. The sheriff's liable to ask you a lot of tricky questions. Don't say a word. I'll do all the talking. Sure, Rafe, sure. Hey, Rafe. Thanks a lot. All right, Jack.
What's wrong, Tonto? Brewster, him in jail, him shoot and kill Gibson. What? Does he say why he did it? Him not say anything. Lawyer Paulson talked for him. Paulson? I've heard of him. He's been involved in a number of shady deals. I don't like this, Tonto. Last night, Brewster was willing to talk to Gibson. I wonder what made him change his mind. What do we do, Kimisabe? We'll visit the scene of the shooting. We may learn something there. Hello, Ox. Head over to the fairgrounds? Yes, Rafe. The people stirred up over the killing? Plenty stirred up. I planted the idea that Jack killed Gibson in cold blood like you told me. When I left, a lot of them were talking about a lynching. That's exactly the way we want them to talk. And when we lynch Brewster, the sheriff will suspect everybody and nobody. Do we have to lynch him, Rafe? That's the last step of my plan, Ox. This afternoon, Mr. Brewster signed over to me all of his property. <laughs> he thought he was signing an agreement for me to be his attorney. If you got that, why do we have to kill him? So I can say that he gave me the property for my fee for being his attorney. If he's dead, he can't deny it. I guess you're right, Rafe. But can't we shoot him in his cell? A lynching will make it look like he's being punished for murder. When do we do it? The sooner we get it over with, the better. Are all the people still out the fairgrounds? Yeah, likely be there another hour. Good. Have you got those disguises we used on the last job? They're at my cabin. Get them. Also, get your guns, a good strong rope, and an extra horse. I'll meet you out in back of the jail in half an hour. Body fall here, Kim me. Look, Tonto. Someone turned onto the path here. The trail comes from behind that rock. Prince of three horses and one man, Kimisami. But who and why? From what you told me, we'll learn nothing from Paulson. We must question Brewster. But him not talk to anyone. We'll get to him somehow. Get the horses, Tonto. Reach, Sheriff. What do you men want? Jack Brewster. He killed Gibson. We come to return the compliment. He's got to hang. That'll be decided after he's had a fair trial. You'll hang now. Give us the keys, Sheriff. Come and get them. What? Here's the key. Let's get Bruce. Come on out, Brewster. I heard you out there. But you've got to come in and get me. Another lynching party? No, we're friends. Who did this? Two men took Jack Brewster. They're hanging him. I overheard him say the big oak. It's a mile west of town. Let's get him on that couch. Take care of him. Then follow me to the big oak. Ah. your gun. Paulson, it's the masked man. Shut up. Paulson. Get off your horse. Turn around. There's your lawyer, Brewster. Is this the way you take care of your clients? What's he doing masked? He can explain that at the sheriff's office. You'll take Brewster in, too. He's your murderer. He shot Gibson. I intend to. I shot Gibson in self-defense. If there's a penalty for that, I'm willing to pay it. Paulson didn't say anything about your shooting Gibson in self-defense. Why, the dirty skunk.
Keep your eye on this other man, Jack, while I tie and search Paulson. Hi, hi. Sure. Come over here, Paulson. Turn around and put your hands behind your back. Should have been out to the fairgrounds, Sheriff. What's going on here, Indian? What are you doing? Me find Sheriff him been hit on head. Just a minute. You've got some questions to answer. The Sheriff hurt bad. Me get doctor. I'll get the doctor. Drop that gun belt. Meantime, you're going to wait in the cell till this thing is cleared up. Let's move. Now you get doctor for sheriff. He must have me explain later. Freeze, masked man. Something you didn't know. Brewster's almost blind. I got a gun in his ribs now, and he didn't even see me move toward him. Drop your guns or I let him have it. Good work, Ox. Untie Paulson. I'm sorry, masked man. My eyes have been going back on me for months. I wouldn't admit it, even to myself. How could you see to shoot Gibson? I couldn't. I just shot wild, figuring to scare him. The bullet must have hit him. <laughs> Won't hurt us for you to know now. Brewster didn't shoot Gibson. He was dead a half hour before he got to the ranch. Why did you do it, Paulson? I'm beginning to see it now. For my property, mister, which I probably signed over to him this afternoon. He guessed it, boss. I'll watch him, Grant. Use the rope on him, and we'll see what's under that mask. Finish, Drave. All right, rip off his mask. Put up hands. You. Take off rope. Good work, Tonto. Now we'll take them all down to the sheriff's office. A few weeks later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto visited Jack Brewster. That's about it, Lone Ranger. Paulson and Grant were hanged for the murder of Gibson. I got my property back, and as you thought, the railroad only wanted a strip of my property. They start laying tracks next month. Good. Well, if it hadn't been for my stubbornness and pride, Gibson might be alive today. Pride is a foolish thing. If more people would admit their weaknesses as well as their strong points, the world would be a better place. You do what Kimasame suggest about eyes? I sure did, Tonto. You see that little limb over there on the fork of the tree? Ah. Watch this. Good as I ever was in my sharpshooting days. Adios, Jack. Come back soon, Lone Ranger. Be with the Lone Ranger and Tonto same time next week for new dangers in another thrill-packed adventure. The Lone Ranger rides again.